instruction manual for the human beings it is the glorious quran i request sister zunaira ayman of grade 4 to throw more light on this remarkable blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al quran the message of peace الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على سيد المصطفى صلى الله على آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى سرات العزيز الحميد رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. The topic of my talk is Al-Qur'an, the message of peace. In the Qur'an, brothers and sisters, the word As-Salam, peace and its derivatives are mentioned in 140 passages. The direct mention of the word As-Salam and its derivatives in the noun and the verb form is mentioned 140 times in the Quran and that word peace revolves around six main meanings that have been mentioned in the Quran the first is one of the beautiful names of Allah the Almighty As-Salam in Surah Al-Hashr chapter number 59 ayah number 23 Allah the Almighty says Wallahu alladhi la ilaha illahu الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون He is Allah who besides none have the right to be worshipped He is the King He is the Holy He is the Salam He is the source of peace He is the giver of peace He is the only one free from any imperfection and deficiencies and it is not a coincidence that one of the names of Allah is As-Salam and his message, Al-Quran, is a message of peace. And the Quran was revealed on a night which is described as As-Salam. In Surah Al-Qadr, chapter number 97, Allah the Almighty says, Inna anzalna fi Laylatul Qadr, the night of the revelation of the Quran, which is Laylatul Qadr is described in the surah as a peaceful night. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr A night full of peace. More than any other night. A night better than a thousand months of continuous worship. Because the Quran was revealed on that night. Second, As-Salam is also mentioned in the Quran as the name of the religion Allah the Almighty chose that name for the only true religion He accepts and approves. He Azzawajal says in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse 19, Inna dina Allah al-Islam. Most surely, 
the only true religion with Allah is Islam. Then in the same chapter, Allah the Almighty says in verse 85, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever desires and seeks other than Islam as a religion, it won't be accepted from him, and he will be amongst the losers in the year after. So there's only one God, and there's only one message, and there's only one religion, and it is not a secret that Allah the Almighty says that the religion which he approves is Islam. It is to submit yourself clearly and entirely unto him. Third, the meaning of the word Salam in the Quran is a greeting, which is indeed the greeting of the only religion taught to Adam, peace be upon him, in the heavens by the angels, instructed to the believers in the Quran. In Surah Al-An'am, chapter number 6, what a beautiful verse. Verse number 54, Allah the Almighty says, وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ إِنَّهُ مَنْ عَمِلَ مِنْكُمْ سُوءًا بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِي وَأَصْلَى فَإِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Which means, whenever those who believe in our commandments come to you, Muhammad, peace be upon him, فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Say to them, peace be upon you. Your Lord has ordained mercy upon himself. So if any of you does evil and ignorance, then he turns afterwards with repentance and does a right. Wa aslaha. Indeed, Allah will be all forgiving and most merciful. This is a message of peace and assurance. So long as he turned to Allah with sincere repentance and beg for his forgiveness, most certainly you will be forgiven. And that gives us peace, that gives us comfort and peace of mind. The fourth meaning of the word as in the Qur'an is safety and security against every evil. Allah the Almighty instructed Prophet Nur, peace be upon him, get ready to learn. In Surah Hud, chapter number 11, in ayah number 48, Allah Instructed Prophet Nuh, peace be upon him, saying, قِيلَ يَا نُوهُ اُحْبِطُوا بِسَلَامٍ مِنَّا وَبَرَكَاتٌ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِمَّنْ مَعَكَ Allah said to him, Descend down with peace and blessings from us upon you and upon the people from amongst the nations who are with you. The fifth meaning, as I mentioned earlier, that the word as salam in the Qur'an revolved around six main meanings and the fifth is an admiration Thana in Surah Safa chapter number 37 Allah admired several of his prophets he began by Prophet Nur peace be upon him in ayah number 79 he said Salamun ala Nuhan fil alameen inna kathalika nadzil muhsineen and similarly he said Salamun ala Ibrahim Salamun ala Musa wa Harun. Salamun ala Ilyas. Which means, peace from us be upon Nuh in the world, upon Ibrahim, upon Moses and Aaron, upon Prophet Ilyas. Peace be upon all of them. The sixth meaning of the word as in the Quran is goodness, righteousness, good speech. In Surah Furqan, Chapter number 25, verse 63. Allah admired the servants of the most beneficent amongst their traits. He, as Zawajal says, the servants of a Rahman, they walk on earth with humility, with humbleness, and whenever they address with the foolish, with foolish statements, they say what is good. They say peace. They do not reply with the same. These were the six meanings of the word Salam, peace in the glorious Qur'an. Brothers and sisters, the guidance which Allah had revealed to his prophet, Al-Qur'an, the miracle of all miracles, it is a guidance, it is a means of peace, 
and security for everything that exists. This is the message of Allah which he wanted us to communicate to the whole world, to every human being, Muslim and non-Muslim, as well as, as Allah mentions in various places in the Quran, including Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse 1. In the verse that which I read in the beginning of my talk, Alif Lam Ra, Kitabun Anzalnahu, Ilayka li tukhrija nasa min al-dhulumati ila al-nur, bi-idhni rabbihim, ila asuratin aziz al-hamid. Alif Lam Ra, this is a book which we have revealed to you, that you may bring forth men by their Lord's permission from utter darkness into light, to the way of the mighty, the praised one. Before I conclude, I want you to refer to a very important matter in the Quran. Whenever the Quran reads or tries to solve a problem, it does not solve it or treat it superficially. Rather, it uproots the problem. So in order to establish peace, provide people with security and happy life, the Quran commands the means of peace, which is justice, the greatest eye in this regard, and the most comprehensive with regards to the commands, rules, regulations, do's and do not do's, is Ayah number 90 of Surah An Nahl, chapter number 16, in which Allah the Almighty says, إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون Most surely Allah commands the following three commandments Al-Adl is justice to treat people equally Al-Ihsan is goodness and righteousness وإيتاء ذي القربة giving charity to the kindred and he forbids the falling tree. Al-Fahsha is indecency. Al-Munkar is evil. wal which is the opposite of Al-Adl, rebellion and transgression. Brothers and sisters, the Quran, from cover to cover, is a message of peace. Not only the 114 chapters or passages which I mention, that they directly instruct peace and God is too. As how to live with ourselves, with inner peace and how to live with others with peace amongst ourselves and with non-Muslims as well. In conclusion, I would say, read the Quran. It is the word of ultimate truth. It is the word of Allah, who is the source of peace and the giver of peace. As-salam. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Zunaira. May Allah reward you manifold times for your remarkable speech on the Quran. A bright and intelligent boy of ten, Harun Surki loves listening to the recitation of the Quran. He is very keen on outdoor activities and enjoys playing football and tennis. He aspires to be an international dai and takes Dr. Zakir Nayak as his role model. He is a very compassionate boy who loves animals and worries about their preservation and rights. The best example for the Ummah, the last messenger to mankind, was sent not only as a boon to the society, but as a solace to the suffering of the world, as a harbinger of happiness to the unhappy, soother to disheartened, comforter to the uneased, he was a blessing, a boon to all, and most importantly, he was a mercy to mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al anbiya chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent thee except as a mercy to the worlds. To throw more light on this cherished personality, let me call upon Brother Harun Surki of Grade 5 to speak on the topic Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mercy to the World
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين رب شرحني صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفقوا غولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The topic of my talk is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mercy to the world. Ya ikhwati fillah, let me tell you about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show the mercy that this man had for all of mankind and for us in particular. It's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of invocations, hadith number 6305. The Prophet ﷺ said, For every messenger of Prophet that Allah has sent, Allah gave him one dua. One dua that is guaranteed that Allah would answer. And every messenger Every prophet who ever came before me, he used his dua. And I, as Muhammad wasallam, kept my dua, kept that particular dua from my ummah for the day of judgment. Now, he's concerned about us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's telling us, this is what I'm willing to offer you. Not to destroy the Quraysh, not to make dua against anyone, not to use for my own benefit but to save you on the day of Yawmul Qiyamah. Ikhwati fillah. Further, Allah says in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse 128, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Verily, there has come to you a messenger from among yourselves, Azizun alayhi ma'anittum. It grieves him. It hurts him. It bothers him to see you go through difficulties. Harisun alaykum. He's so anxious. He's so keen. Bil mu'mineen. For the believers. Wa ufu rahim. Kind, pity, and merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about him concerning his ummah. But what about the rest of the people? He is also a mercy to all mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran the verse that I recited at the beginning of my talk from Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse 107. O oh Muhammad, we have not sent you except being a mercy to all mankind. Lila alameen, all the worlds, to the whole world. It's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 8, hadith number 5997. al Hasan radiallahu anhu came to the messenger of Allah, and Hassan bin Ali, a child, and then the messenger of Allah, he picked up the child and kissed him. al aqab bin Habis, one of the people, one of the tough Arabs, one of the basic individuals who had lived in the desert, this man, when he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissing this young boy, قَالَ إِنَّا لِي مِنَ الْوَلَدِ عَشَرِ He said, I have ten children. I have never kissed any one of them. Never? Subhanallah! Never kissed a child and you have ten of them? Never? فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ And the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ said, مَنْ لَا يَمْحَمُ لَا يُرْحَمْ Whosoever does not show mercy to others, Mercy will not be shown to him. And this is a general term, mercy, when you're dealing with your family members. Because Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us what to do, how to approach people, how to talk to children, how to deal with women, how to deal with a non-Muslim, how to deal with animals. So you, if you are not having mercy for all of this, then you are not following the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, ya ikhwati fillah, from the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mercy to the people who are under us, people that work for us, people that came from a different country, and the people 
from within the country itself that work for us. And also Allah وسلم, told us because he is a mercy to all mankind. And he said, and this is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 8, hadith number 6050. Do not overload them, do not overwork them, and if you have to ask them to do extra work, then help them. So, if you have this man who is working for you 8 hours a day, and you want him to work for you 9 hours, then you have to help him, because in Islam it's not allowed. In Islam, it's not allowed to abuse workers, to abuse people who are under you. Because Islam came as a mercy, not as a system who abuses the weak. Also, ya ikhwati fillah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not eager to destroy people, to destroy civilizations, to destroy nations, and to hurt people. Rather, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy, as we stated. And you can remember this once again, and this is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 5, hadith number 4653. The hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, when she looked up at him and said, Ya Rasulullah, and this was after the battle of Uhud. Did you ever experience any situation that the situation of the day of Uhud? فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم, Naam, laqad laqitu ma laqi. He said, I really experienced for me people. The day I came back from Taif, the day they represented Islam to the people of Taif, and they rejected me, and he came back walking from Taif with concerns and worries. And he said, I was walking, and all of a sudden, Jibreel calls me, and he says, O oh Muhammad, Allah has heard the call of your people, and Allah has sent an angel to respond to your call, and to do whatever you ask him to do. This is the angel of the mountain. Ask him your request. And the angel of the mountain said, Ya Muhammad, if you want, I can destroy the people. Now, keep in mind, they are the people who used to stop the Dawah of Islam. They are the people who used to try to harm the messenger of Allah. And Allah is giving him one opportunity and saying to him, If you want, we can destroy the people. And the messenger of Allah said, La, I hope. That Allah will produce from the offspring, from their children, a generation who will worship Allah. These are the enemies of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are not the friends and the brothers and the people who want to live with him civil. No, these are the enemies of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he is thinking da'wah. He is thinking if I destroy these people, their offspring, they will never see the light of Islam. No, I'll be patient with them, and I hope that the children will accept Islam.